In this video we're going to take a look at another uh, core node red node and that's the HTTP request node. Uh, before we do that let's just have a quick review of HTTP. It's a command or request response a protocol. In other words you give a command or you make a request and you get a response back. It's text-based so you can actually read it and it uses a client-server communications model which means the client initiates a connection and the server just responds with data. Now a request from the client consists of a command or a request plus optional headers and plus optional body content. So what you've always got is the command, you haven't always got headers and you haven't always got the body content. And the reply or response consists of a status code to say whether it was good or bad, uh, optional headers and again optional body content. Now it uses a simple carriage return line feed uh, to delimit the parts of the of the message. So you have the headers and you have a carriage return line feed to indicate the end of the headers. And you have a blank uh, carriage return line feed to indicate the end of the response. The request looks like this. We have the request method. method. Uh, the most common one is the get, which is get, we're getting data. And we also have the post and there's several other methods. And then we have the resource path, which we commonly call the URI or the URL, and the protocol version. So let's have a look at an example. We're going to access the page testpage.htm on the website www.testside5.com. So at the start of the line, the request would be get, which is the method, test.htm, which is the resource, and http slash 1.1, which is the protocol version. You should notice there's no real mention of the domain name there, the www.testside5.com and that really is just to get the message to the destination server. It's not part of the actual request itself. The request starts with the, the get method. Uh, just a few notes. Uh, the relative path doesn't actually include the domain name. The browser uses the URL that you enter to extract the relative URI of the resource, which is in our case is test.htm. The actual request is not shown by the browser, so you don't see the get and the, the rest of the request. It's only visible if you actually use some special tools like um, live HTTP headers on Firefox, which you can download. It's an extension you can download. So the, the response, it consists of a status code, one or more option headers and optional body content which can be many lines it can be binary data and there are five groups of response codes and they they're designated with a, a starting digit so that you've got the one series the two series the three series the four series and the five series and this is what they all mean here so let's have a look at a request response and this is our request here http www.testside5.com and there's the resource we're after and this is what we see if we look at the the headers we see the get and then we see here underneath here these are the request headers these are actually inserted by the browser and the interesting one is connection keep alive now the original HTTP, HTTP 1, um, opened the connection and then made a request, got a response and dropped the connection. Now the HTTP 1.1 protocol has the keep alive functionality and that's commonly used and basically it opens a connection, gets the response and keeps the connection open and that's because in modern web traffic there's more than one request response going on so you don't want to create a new connection when you have another requ request for the same for the same website and this is the response there's a protocol version there's the 200 which indicates it's okay this is a response code and here are the response headers here okay so that's a quick overview of HTTP there I'll put a link to the tutorial on the website which goes into it in a bit more detail and has a link as all links to other resources that you might find useful and now let's go and have a look at the HTTP request node in node red okay this is a flow I'm going to use to demonstrate the HTTP request node now the HTTP request node is part of the function node it's down here you can see it here and again you just drag it into the workspace to use it and I'm going to use it uh, in conjunction with an inject node 
and the inject node is, is not doing anything here, it's just kicking off the flow and the output's going into a debug node. So let's have a quick look at the HTTP request node and remember there's the info on it here. So first thing is the, the method, we can use get, post, put, delete and we can even set the method in the preceding preceding node and I'll show you how to do that later on and the URL we're going to get and you can see it here and again we can set that in the preceding node uh, which is not obvious here and I'll show you again how to do that uh, we can enable SSL and we can enable authentication username and password in here and the return what we get back on the response can be a UTF UTF-8 string which is a basic web page or it can be a binary buffer which is binary data or it can be a past JSON object so if it's returning JSON data and in another video I'll show you uh, how to use those okay the web page I'm going to get is here it's the JSON placeholder web page uh, useful, useful site for testing uh, JSON APIs and I'll just show you it now So there it is here, there's the home page, and you can see there's intro example. There's the intro. Uh, JSON placeholder is a free online REST API. You can use wherever you need some fake data. Uh, it's great for tutorials, testing for new libraries, and sharing code examples. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Let's deploy a flow and let's have a look what it looks like here. Let's go on to the debug node, make the request. and you So here's the response over here. We've got the payload. You can see it starts with doc type. That is the actual web page itself. And we can open that up to look at it. And we can also look at the headers. It's an object. And we can see we've got the date. We've got the content type. We've got the connection, and etc., etc. All the way down here. These are response headers. And the response sorry the status code further up here which is 200 which means it was successful okay so that was a simple request now we're going to do the same thing again uh, this time we're going to query Google uh, but this time we're going to do it programmatically so if I look at the HTTP request node I'm now setting the the method in the preceding node and I'm also setting the URL in the preceding node so nothing in there it's all done in this change node here so in the change node I set the message URL and this time to Google and I set the message method to get and we deploy it clear this and we make the request and this time you see here we query google.com and there's the payload if I open up the payload, you can see the status code here is 200. And you can see the headers here, and I can open up the header object, and I can see all the headers that uh, the Google website sent back to me. Okay, that was two simple requests. Now, in our third uh, demonstration, what I'm going to do is actually examine the data. So we're going to use uh, an HTML node, uh, which is... which is this one here. So let's have a look at the HTML node here and again there's the info page for it here. Now I'm looking for the message payload. Uh, the selector I'm using is a div so I'm going to extract the div tags and what I'm going to extract is the HTML content of those those div tags. I could extract only the text data or I could an object of any attributes uh, of all the elements and we extract them as a single message containing an array or we can extract them as multiple messages one for each element okay now let me show you the page and we can look at the page source and you can see a very simple page which is why I chose it actually and you can see that clearly the the div tag so you can see a div tag here 
and you can see a div tag here and you can see another one there okay so we're going to extract the contents of those div tags with this little flow so let's deploy it let's go on to the debug node and clear it and let's make the request and you can see here like, the payload net this time is an array status code 200 and if I open up the payload you can see here the, the contents of that div tag so we use the HTML node to extract uh, parts of a web page lot to cover on the HTTP request node so I'm splitting the video up into several videos and in the next video we'll take a look at uh, query strings using uh, mustache templates and you can see an example there and we'll look at getting JSON data from a, a website and extracting values from that data and provided it doesn't go on too long we'll then look at the request header setting request headers so it brings us to the end of the video. If you've got comments, then please leave them below. If you like the video, then click the like button below. If you want to be notified of new videos on the channel, then you can always subscribe. And if you do use social media and like to share it, then please feel free. Until next time, goodbye.